Did I push it all the way over? Oh, I, I knew I had the power. Oh, <laughs> boy. Yeah. Boy, that James can play the music, can he? Oh, my goodness. I got to be around this guy more. Oh, man. Wow. I like a church that's alive. Some of this stuff you see today is so dead. Oh, my God. You got to start living and get, come on up there. And uh, he played my song, I Saw the Light. Oh, my goodness. I like that song. Hank Williams sang it years ago. And uh, uh, I like some country. I don't dare to say I like all country. <laughs> but uh, some country songs I really, I really like. I love the southern draw. And I wanted to go to the south when I was younger. And I had come to Holland here. And I came and... Uh, <clears throat> When was it? It was about like 1960. Oh, that's yeah, and uh, it was a graveyard for evangelism. I mean, I, <laughs> there are probably about four churches maybe in the whole area maybe that went for revival. And I was going to go down south because you know, they really would have it there. And the Lord told me to stay here and he was right. Boy, I'm telling you, it's opened up not only here, but all over western Michigan. And the revivals we're seeing today, the power of God, it is awesome. It's powerful. And the scriptures that I want to talk on today, coming from Psalm 119, and James will put them up on the screen. And uh, I believe it's John 12, 8 was the other one. And I was saved by the light. And when I came to the Lord... And uh, really started to trust him and start believing the Lord. And that was 1970 that I started. So it was 1969 when I came here. So 1969 and 1970, I went into evangelism. And I was working at Kilo Brass in Grand Rapids, driving from here. And uh, I was trying to make a decision whether I, I had worked in the funeral home for years. And... Uh, uh, in Hopkins where I was born and raised and so I was contemplating I was going to become a mortician <laughs> boy and so or a minister and I was trying to <laughs> so and then at the same time I was studying to be a priest and so I wanted to do something for God you know so I so boy I didn't know which way to go so I needed light right I needed some light on my path and so I was young, we were in high school, and I met my wife, Barb, and so I couldn't go along with the celibacy anymore. And so, so uh, uh, we got married, and, and then I, while I was working at Keeler, I gave my heart to the Lord by a guy who led me to the Lord there, and just started serving the Lord in Hopkins, and I worked in the... Uh, well, in the funeral home, and I worked in the factory, and I decided to go in the ministry. So I studied years to go into the ministry, and 1970, I went in full time. When I was in the funeral home, uh, you know, uh, a lot of things were going on in my life because I was just a new Christian, and I just had so much to learn. You know, I learned laws of the church and uh, formulas that you had to live by, and all the things you had to go through in religion and it just it was all right but I thought there's got to be something more and when I got saved I just didn't know that you could know that you could have eternal life I never heard that and and, and this guy came up he said yeah he says uh, I know where I'm going I said well, you can't know that he says I do and I said well the Bible doesn't say that he says yes it does I said, really? Come on. The Bible says you can know you can have eternal life. you got to be kidding. And so anyway, I got a Bible. I got a Roman Catholic Bible because I wouldn't read anything else. And so there it was. Sure enough, the guy was right. And I was reading through the New Testament. And there it was. And I was smoking my pipe that night and the ashes were falling over the Bible. And I'm, I'm reading away after supper. And uh, it says, these things have been written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life. I said, oh my goodness. You could live forever in heaven. And all you had to do was receive Jesus as your Savior, call upon him, 
and he would come to live in your heart. And so night after night as I read the Bible, I knew I was saved. I was so excited about it. One night I was reading the Bible, smoking my pipe again, and all the ashes falling over it. And I looked at the Bible and I looked at my pipe and I said, one of these have got to go. <laughs> so I put my pipe down, never touched it again, and went on. And so as I'd be in the shop, I would just... Everywhere I go, I take my Bible with me. And I go down to the bank, I took my Bible. I thought everybody did. I thought, you know, so I always had a Bible. I was always carrying it around just in case I needed it. And the guys in the shop, they know it, they knew at that time that I'd quit smoking. And some would say, boy, I wish I had a light. I wish I had a light. And I said, I got one. Jesus is the light of the world. And, and I just... I just read it in here the other day and I, I want to show this to you. And I, you know, I was so excited because I, I just never read this stuff before. And it was so awesome. And, and people would say, have you got a light? Here I'd come again, open it up, and then I got little tracks about the light. And it just, you know, just started, and pretty soon they didn't ask me anymore. They would, they would say, oh no, oh no. <laughs> But a lot of them came to the Lord, serving the Lord, and my brother Terry came to the Lord, and all these years we worked together. And when I was working in the funeral home, the, the, the director said, uh, we, if, when I was there, we just had so many tragedies, suicide, people hanging themselves, tractors tipping over on farmers. I mean, it was, I thought, Lord, what are you doing? And the director came to me one day and he says, you're a very fortunate man that you're seeing all of this. I said, yeah, right. And he said, no, he says, you're going to go in the ministry. He said, I'm pretty sure. I said, I think I'm going to. And he says, what you learn here, you'll carry with you the rest of your life. What I've taught you, all these things are the families you had to go with, all these things. And boy, was he right. I, I got a head start by, you know, just working for him. But in the funeral home, we'd have funerals, you know, week after week, and I'd do the weekends. And so uh, when i get in all these cars, I'd have to move them around and put them here and there. And so I'd get in their car, and I'd just turn the car on, and I'd have to move it. And if they didn't have the radio on, I'd turn the radio, and there was a great station out of Grand Rapids that just taught the Word of God. And so I'd reach down and I'd set that station, I'd pull that button all the way out and then push it back in. So whenever you hit that button for a station, it would turn on that station. And so I, I did that for years. And, and I thought, boy, Lord, just use that, you know. And people would around town and say, you know, I used to get these buttons all the time. I hit that, and I was never set for that. And I got that Christian station. And, and people got saved, came to the Lord. And, I, you know, I, it's just I, anything I could do like that, I was just always trying to get people to come to the Lord and see the light and serve God and find the joy that there is in a Christian life. And, you know, what, what's the hardest thing that we have to keep in our Christian life that I really had... I mean, I had so much joy. It was almost like joy unspeakable and full of glory. It was almost too much for me. Because it was just, you know, you almost lose reality after a while because you're just filled with this and people are complaining and griping and you, you always got so many of them. They're in trouble all the time and it's one thing after another and pretty soon your head just thinks, my goodness, how much of this stuff do you take? And then, a lot of times, if you give them too much joy, it's more than they can take. And so you got, so I always call, as you heard me say before, I spooned it out and all this, all this. So Terry and I would go around my brother, and all these years we just taught the Word of God, just taught about the light, and giving out the Word of God, and, and actually living it and feeling the greatness of the Lord. And then... When I got in the ministry, I knew I'd never be a pastor or a missionary. And I always knew that I'd be spreading the word of God probably as an evangelist. And that's what I turned out to be. And shared all these wonderful truths around the country. And so when I started out in 1970, and I told you a little bit of before uh, about uh, one of my favorite songs is, uh, you know, uh, 
is back from those days when they just needed the love of God. And that, that love, and we'd stand around and sing all those love songs and, and just love it on each other and just uh, go out into the fields. And we go into small churches and, and we go into civic centers and high schools and all these young peoples and college kids. And, and the Lord told me that in the end times, uh, it wouldn't be right at the end, but when times were getting bad like they are today, that these college kids and high school kids will come to the Lord. Guess what's happening? And, yet, and this is only the beginning of it. And, it. and I started to see it five years ago. And I've been teaching college kids for a long time now, uh, week after week, month after month. And I thought, Lord, what is this? How do I get into all these college kids and, and kids going to high school? And I just sit in a chair and I teach them all these things. And they, they're so eager well, who wouldn't be today? I mean, the ide ideologies of today and what people believe, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's unbelievable. And I mean, what, what, what they're teaching, and, well, I don't have to tell you, just turn on your television. I mean, it's just more than, more than what you can take. But we're coming into the Easter season, and this is one of my fi favorite times of the year in Christmas. And uh, I remember when some of the, the first meetings I would be in in the 70s, I'd go into Carson City, Michigan, and I worked all that area because they couldn't get an evangelist to come. And so I went to a small Methodist church. Well, it wasn't too small, but it wasn't a huge church, but pretty good size. And so I started teaching there, and my message got around the country, and I started Greenville, Cadillac and all those areas start to hear about me and so I, they really kept me busy and so when I was in this Methodist church uh, there were a couple people that became good friends of mine and uh, Dale and Maggie Skilling and uh, Maggie played the organ and the piano and they were up in age and, and Dale was to the church once in a while and I would be there for meetings and she'd, oh you got to pray for Dale, we, he needs to come to the Lord and, and, and I didn't know him that well and so uh, I, I, I was praying and I said he doesn't have a chance and this is what I tell people, we start praying for them, they're going to come and just, just quit worrying about it I, I can't tell you the thousands of people that I've told this to and I've never seen one yet that they didn't come, not one ever might have taken a lot of years, and some of them were at their deathbed, but they came, okay? So, yeah, because God's faithful, and the Holy Spirit, because you can't outdo the Holy Spirit. He's on your case, and you're just, well, once you pray about it, it's never going to get off the case, and he's, he's on it. And so anyway, it was one Easter Sunday morning, as Dale tells it, that, uh, Maggie said to him, Dale, it's Easter time and I want you to come to church today. And you didn't come last Christmas and you said you would. And you come at least on Easter and Christmas. And Dale says, oh, Maggie, you just go ahead. I I'm going to go out and feed the chickens and take care of the things on the farm. You know, and you go, you know, you're used to it. And so, so anyway, Maggie, you know, she gets ready and she... Uh, just kind of waiting for Dale to come in. They'd have their breakfast and she'd take off. Well, Dale went into the chicken coop and while he was feeding the chickens, all of a sudden, a tremendous light came through the chicken coop right through the windows. And this light was so brilliant and bright that he started to tremble. And he says, Lord, is that you? And he, he felt a tremendous power start to come through him. And he was lifted up with joy that he had never known before. He fell to the ground right in all the manure. <laughs> and he praised God. And the chickens were dancing around, chirping and jumping and going. And the light was more brilliant. He said, I had to put my eyes to the ground. And he says, Lord, I'll do what you want me to do. And he says, I, I just stayed there. He said, I was, he was filling me, filling me. He said, I didn't hear a sound. The Lord didn't talk to me audibly. But he said, I just got it. You might say it all one shot. And so he finally stood up and the light subsided. 
And he got enough strength and he ran into the house and he said, Maggie, Maggie. He was hollering before he even opened the door. He said, I was so excited. Maggie, I'm going to church with you today. And so anyway, <laughs> praise God. Well, he didn't say anything to Maggie. And so they got ready and they went to church. And they're sitting there and she's, oh, Dale, thanks for coming today. He said, you're welcome. And he, she noticed he had a big smile on his face. Well, he was up to something. He was a jokester anyway. And he was up to something and she knew it. And they're sitting in the back. And that morning they had people come to the altar and, and uh, Dale didn't go. And the pastor said, I wonder if there's someone here this morning that maybe God has done something special for you or, <laughs> yeah, right, or something you'd like to say. And Dale was no public speaker, believe me. I mean, he, he always sat in the back. And he raised his hand. He says, Pastor, I'd like to come up and say something. And Dale is walking up and people says, Dale? Dale Skilling is coming up? They, 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 really? <laughs> you know, and Dale gets up there and he stands by the pulpit, never stuttered, never, he's, I'm telling you this morning, the greatest thing happened to me. And he told them just what I told you. And he says, I am filled with the, all the fullness of God. He says, I know I got a lot more to learn. Because I'm telling you, starting today, I'm a new man. And he says, I'm not going to give you a lot of promises today. I'm not going to say a lot of things. But I, I want you to watch the light in me that I found this morning. I was saved by the light. How can I explain that? I don't know. But he says, through the years, what I have left, you will see that light in me and in Maggie like you have never seen it before. And boy, did he mean it. He turned that church around. God did. Through his prayers. He went in. They had a tremendous uh, evangelistic outreach in all those areas of that area of, oh, it probably went up even north further. And all these churches came together once a year. And I mean, it was a Holy Ghost meeting. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh boy. I mean, if you they, they didn't care what faith you were, they didn't care who you were, come on in and boy did they sing and play and did they preach the word of God with love and tender care. Oh boy. Well Dale got into that. And every time he went, he'd speak. I mean, he was a marvelous speaker. And he, he was so bashful, he'd never talk before. You couldn't even get him say anything. I mean, he was a quiet guy. He sure wasn't after that. And we would go up there, and I'm telling you, uh, he opened the door for me for 10 to 12 years because I didn't know where I was going to preach. When I left Keeler Brass, I didn't have any money. Uh, I had a little money that they'd saved up for me in a, well, like a 401k, but it wasn't very much to get by on. I mean, it, you couldn't feed a family on it for long. And I only had two churches. And so that's how God started me in all that area. And we just moved by that power of God. I went up into a place called Mancelona. And in those areas up there, Cadillac, Mancelona, uh, Traverse City, I, oh, I get, all these places open for me. And I did two a month, two meetings a month. And then the other times on Sunday, I spoke around Holland because I didn't want to be gone all the time from my family. In Mancelona, we went up there in the winter time. And it was, uh, oh, it was cold. Uh, Mancelona is kind of, a, if you ever been up there, it's old. Old buildings, those cold, old, and they need help. <laughs> and, but good people. People that love the Lord. They live by themselves pretty much. They're, they're great hometown type people. The best you'll ever find. And so we started in this Free Methodist Church up there. And it was just a little small church and I'd gone up just for meetings. And so when I went up and the snow was so bad. I mean, it was, oh. You could hardly get into town. 
And so we started on a Sunday morning. And there were just a few people in the church, not very many. And, and so I started preaching on how big is God. And so we started Sunday, Sunday night. And boy, at night there were more people and I was going to stay till Friday. And so Sunday night more people came in and the news got around. And by Monday night, we couldn't hold them in the church anymore. It was, I mean, they, the kids were kneeling down in the altar, the sides, the back. And the adults were taking the chairs. And people were just weeping and crying and coming forward. Not only just giving their life to the Lord, but being filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, confessing things. They needed money. They needed resources. There was such a need. And in all that need, they, just, they were just seeking out with God. Just like the need you have here. More people are coming and we're speaking it. And I've been speaking it all the time. And you'll start seeing more people come. More people come this year. And it's all coming more and more and more. And we just keep speaking. Just keep bringing it in. And we walk by faith and we believe by faith. And that's what I started to tell them. We walk and we believe by faith. Now I said, I was saved by the light. Just like Dale. And I said, my favorite song is I Saw the Light back then. Now Josh Turner sings it. He's my favorite. Oh boy, he can really sing it better than, well, maybe not better, but I think he's a little better. But anyway, that it says it all. Because Hank had the same thing. He had a wife that was pretty hard to live with. And they had a lot of things going on as he traveled the country. He was in a lot of stuff. But boy, when he saw the light, he turned around. And all of his songs, everything he did, I mean, for the rest of his life, man, he was a powerhouse. Anybody is. After, after that light penetrates you and that comes into you. And so I started to teach them in Mancelona that, you know, we've all been taught about faith a lot. And there are a lot of teachers that are powerhouse faith, I call them. And they're strong. And I learned under a lot of them. And but sometimes we don't get all what we want. And we get discouraged because we think, well, why don't I get that? And we hear what they get and all these things. But when I started studying their lives and I got resources on them, some of them went through hell. I mean, their families, I had no idea. Because to hear them talk, you just ask. You just believe God and it's yours. You just wait on God. Well, I did all that and a lot of my friends did all that. Well, a lot of that didn't come for us. And, and I'm not saying anything about them. If they got it, praise God. But I want to know how to get it too. Huh? Yeah, I, I'd like to get some of that going for my family and ministry and people that I love. Well, People got caught up with this and I was asked a lot about that where I would go and I said, oh yeah, I know him. I know her. I listen to him all the time. You do? Oh yeah. I said, absolutely. I've listened to some of the best, best, you know, Pentecostal teachers you could ever hear. You name it, I've heard them. I've been with them. Yeah, all of them. I don't think many got by me because I love fire. <laughs> you bet. So I said, now, what we have to do, we got to kind of tone it down a little bit and let the light shine a little more than our emotions and us demanding everything from God. Now I says, here's what we need to do. I said, I used to do this too. I confessed all these things by faith. And I used my faith. I said, I got to get more faith. I got to get more faith. And then the next thing is, you know, Lord, you got to give me more faith. Lord, I just don't have enough faith. I just don't believe enough. I got to read more Bible. I got to pray through more. The Methodists were got to pray through. Okay, I I'd done all that for years, and I'm still not really <laughs> where I probably need to be. And one day the Lord gave me an illustration. He said, "You really want to know this, don't you?" And as I do, Lord, said, you got to teach me this. I listen to all these people. I read all these books and pamphlets. They send it to me in the mail and all this stuff. What am I going to do? He says, all right. I went over and I turned on the light. It was dark in the room. Barb says, we need some light in here. Oh, <laughs> okay. But anyway, I said, okay, so I flipped on the light. 
And we couldn't see what we were doing in there. And everything was just so clear. And I thought, oh my God, isn't that, what a difference. And the Lord says, now I'm going to show you something. You just turned on that light switch. But that light switch is not the power. The power is coming from consumer's energy. And it's coming through your wires outside. But when you turn on that light switch, the power is available. Now he says, that's what your faith is. Your faith is that light switch. You don't have the power. So when you want something from me, or you need something, you or someone else, he says, I demand that you turn that light switch on. That's an act of obedience. That's using your faith. I want you to do something. I could sit there all night and say, I want light to come in there. And there wouldn't have been any light coming unless the car went by and you know, lights came through or something like that. But until I went over and flipped that switch on, you're probably not going to get any light. And he said, that's why a lot of people don't get the answers to their prayer. He says, they're trying to do it. So now they try to help me. See, they're trying to get more faith. They're trying to do all of this. Well, you know, God, he'll be coming pretty soon. We've got to wait in God's timing. Or, oh, wait a minute. Uh, if I do this, it, 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 we're just always looking how we're going to help our God. <laughs> As if he needs our help. But... I, I laugh at myself. I didn't, I didn't understand this and I was trying this. And these people were sitting, well, they never heard anything like this. Well, neither had I. I, I had just learned this myself. And they're writing notes. And, I mean, people were coming to the altars and, and, it was, and it was so big that they were coming on snowmobiles. And these young kids, we got them. Uh, I said, you know, they were coming in Sunday night. And I said to the pastor, I said, People here got to have snowmobiles and snowmobiles all over the place. I said, advertise, get it on the radio, that these kids will come and pick you up in, in the area. I'll tell you, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, where there was no place. So Monday night, I said to all the, the few pastors we had there, I said, what is the biggest church in Mancelona? I said, we, we can't hold them. And they said, it's the Methodist church. And, and I said, well, you don't agree with the methods. And they said, so, well, we don't. I said, I don't care about that. We, we got people. Where you all go back to your churches next week, Sunday. I said, right now, you go back into what you're doing. I'm not changing. You're here to change your churches or change this or that. We're here to see people on fire for God, come to the Lord, get spirit-led, get answers to prayer, get healing, and get down to business with God individually. Let's just get on with it, okay? And so I am telling you by Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Wednesday night, that church was packed. And so they had put it on the radio and so by Wednesday and Thursday night I'd never seen anything like it. I mean, the, it just, well, we started at 7 o'clock and we turned the lights out at quarter to 12. I'm telling you, it was nonstop. I mean, people at the altar crying, pleading, begging God. Uh, another song, another testimony. Man, I went home at night like this, like, boy, that was great, God, but how many nights can I take like this? I, I slept till about noon every day, <laughs> but that was all right. And so, you might know, it was on Thursday night, and we were going to extend the meetings now. They all said, can we please keep this going? And I said, I'll stay till Sunday night. And so, it was, it was, it was heaven sent. It's probably one of the greatest meetings I've ever been in. I've been in some mighty good ones. And uh, that night I got up, I, I had a marvelous message. Boy, I did because after a while you give so many messages, you want something fresh and new again, because I didn't have time to study. And I went back on some of my old ones, but, you know, uh, I'm teaching in the morning too. And so that night I had this message, oh, I said, oh thanks Lord, this will go right along with what I'm saying. And I got up, and I could feel something in the spirit that was just not right. 
and the singing and everything and I got up and I started to preach and there was a lady sitting over there to my right and when I looked at her you could just see the evil on her and she was sent by Satan himself and oh she was just pulling the power of God right out of the service and it was pulling it out of me I couldn't quote the scriptures I, I, I couldn't get my thoughts together I had the notes and everything and I thought God I've never experienced what am I going to do so I had him sing another song just so I could get myself together and I, 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 I just I, I walked over to one of the ladies there, she was quite a power prayer. And I said, do you feel this? You know, and I said, let's let them sing a couple songs. And she said, I sure do. And I said, it's dead tonight. And I said, we're in trouble. And I said, it's that lady over there. And then, then I said a few more things. I said, let's sing another song. They thought, well, isn't this guy ever going to get to his message? <laughs> you know? And so I went back over and we started to pray. And so now I, I got back into the message again and she was praying and I, I said go around and try to get others. It's kind of hard to do. And I said get them praying in the spirit. You know and they, they were well, what's that? I said oh yeah that's right. You, <laughs> <laughs> so okay. <laughs> okay. What's that? Okay. Well thank you. Just get them in earnest prayer. Just say earnest prayer. And so they were praying and that lady just looked at me and she just sucked it right out. Just, I, I couldn't look at her any longer. And finally I just said, uh, I got to get a drink of water. And I sat down and I said, Lord. And I just started to pray to myself. I said, you've got to bind this right now. And I'm not putting up with this. I'm all, I'm all done. Now I said, this person or persons, if there's someone with her, I want them out of here right now. Please, Lord. We, there's too much to us that we, we got accomplished. And I'm just praying there waiting for him and I'm just bowing my head and I'm talking to the Lord like this. And I got back and, and, and I got back up and the power started, the light just flashed on me. And I could feel it. And all of a sudden, those messages started to come that God gave me. And that lady just stood there and she just went back in her seat just like that and you could see it. And I just, man, I just, I had it. And I would just feel she could see the light all through me. And people told me, they said, man, you, you were lit up like a light bulb. And I, but I, I didn't know that myself. And they said, man, you were just shining. And I said, God gave it back. And three people got up and walked out that were with her. And man, we had a meeting that night that was awesome. Now, the reason I'm telling you that, I had that in other meetings too. That they came in to destroy and... Uh, I learned that from Oral Roberts years ago and some of the others like Hagen and some of those guys, they said, beware in your meetings. And boy, did I see what they meant. But I was just a young guy and I'd never seen anything. I, I, I'd preached a lot of places, but I'd never seen where everything's just taken right out of you and, you know, you kind of get into all this stuff. And so that light was just shining and we started. So all over these places we'd go, and Dale and Maggie, you know, would come in and we would see all these things happening because of that light and that newness of God. All those things that we would, you know, just see the Lord doing. All the miracles of God. Because of all the gifts that I wanted was the working of miracles. That's the one, well, that's the one that's needed in the church. And then the working of miracles, and I had the other gifts too. The gift of prophecy and... Uh, I remember one time I went to, uh, the first time that I ever had a, a gift of prophecy, I went to Pastor Putney's church. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. In Allegan. And my brother Terry and Ruth Ann were there. And Terry and Ruth Ann, and, and, I, and I was young, yeah, you know, and I was still learning, and, and God was giving me gifts. And so I was trying them out, and, and, and I said, I want to hear Putney. And you guys are always talking about him, and, you know, so I'm going to go over there. And so Barb and I went over there, and we were going to go over to Terry and Ruth Ann's house afterwards. And so I'm sitting in there, and a lady stands up, and uh, she starts to speak. And she, you know, and she's going, and I'm kind of just waiting for Putney to get on. And I'm like, what? And I'm listening away and listening, and 
I said, oh my God. All right. All right. Thank you, Jesus. This is worth coming for. Hallelujah. And so she's going on and on and on. And Pastor Putney, you know, before they always had a word and he, he didn't get up. And I don't know who the assistant there was at that time, but he didn't get up. And nobody interpreted it. And uh, I had interpreted it before. I mean, I wasn't used to doing that. So I raised my hand to Pastor Putney. I says, could I come up a minute? Well, come on up, Dan, you know. And he come on up here. And I went up and I said, well, no one interpreted that. Uh, I just want to tell you what she said. And so I told them, I said, now you've been praying about this for a long time. And I said, you know these things that you've been asking and praying about and you're wondering and getting light on the subject? Well, this is what, the, this is what she said God had told her. And I'm here to switch on the light to show you what she was given through the power of God. And Putney fell on the floor. People, Putney says, you don't know how long I've been waiting for this. And the, and the people in the church came up shaking my hand. And I said, well, don't give me the praise. I'm just telling you what the lady said. And that's what she said. Am I right or wrong? Oh, you're spot on. We've been, and so then I knew that that gift operated. So I was careful about it. Places I'd go, and every once in a while, that light would come and it would shine. And two things that I've always tried to keep in my life is the light burning. And it's not easy. And I always play Light a Candle a lot, that song. Light a Candle. Love that song. Daniel O'Donnell does it best. But anyway, and I saw the light like this. And so everywhere I go, I always have a flashlight. I have them in every pocket. Because I've been in so many dark places. And people will say to me, do you have a light? <laughs> yes, I do. What, what do you need? I'm always without a light. I don't know about you, but every time somebody's under the sink, or somebody's outside, or in the car, or out in the dark, I, I need a light. And so I just started carrying, and how much I use that light. How much I use this, I carry it in my pocket. Every coat I have has a light in it. If not, I change them. I mean, uh, I went down one day and I, said, I could never find a flashlight around this house, I said to my wife. I've had it. And so I got a Christmas gift. And somebody gave me 60 bucks. And I went down about $60 worth of flashlights. <laughs> now I said, there. And that was back when they were cheaper, too. Now, today, I mean, you couldn't buy many of them, right? But back then, I could buy quite a few of them. Now, I said, there, no more not having a light. I'm tired of not having a light. And I don't know how many I bought, but quite a few. And some of them I burned out and had to replace them. But there's something about joy and light. And the light on our path. And that's, that's what these verses talk about, of how that light illuminates us. And the pathway, just lately, uh, oh, in our ministry of Reach Out for Christ, just the last five years, oh, the people that have called us that needed a kidney, or they, they were dying, or they had all kinds of diseases, and just, I mean, I can't even keep track of them all. And so what I, what I have done, I don't say to them anymore, you're going to be healed. And I'll tell you why, because a lot of people don't get healed. And so they get discouraged, and a lot of people do get healed. So this is what I say. I believe you're going to get a good report. A good report's coming. And I, I can feel it, I can sense it. Something good is going to happen to you. Amen. Oral Roberts. Something good is going to happen to you. A guy in the church, Rose Park Reform, years ago. Place was packed. One morning they asked me to come and be a speaker there. Why they invited me? I said, okay. Game over. Yeah. I said that 
Just before I closed, I said, something good is going, I don't do this, I don't just do this randomly, unless I'm led by God. And I don't tell people things unless God tells me. I don't go around doing that. And I said, if there's someone here, something mighty good is going to happen to you. And I mean good. Oh boy. So, I sat down. Well, my brother Terry uh, was up, uh, he and Ruth Ann had a, up in Hart, Michigan, they had a trailer up there. You guys probably remember that. And they'd go up there all the time. And I did too. We'd go up and camp with them and Terry and I, we'd all be together. God, I miss Terry. But anyway, uh, his neighbor came over, two trailers down, and said, I want you to tell your brother Dan that I was in that service that morning at Rose Park. And when he said that, I knew it was for me. My wife and I were crying because she was dying. And there was no cure for what she had. All the doctors had tried everything. There just was nothing. And when he said that, he, he didn't even preach on it. He just said, something mighty good is going to happen to you. And that's what God told me to say. And Terry said, well, what happened? Well, it was about seven days after that, or eight days or so, a doctor called me and said, we think we found something. It's a miracle of God if this works. But we're going to try it on your wife. And he says, I'm ready for anything. And she was healed within three weeks. And she's still living today. She's still living today. And this was 20 years ago. Yeah. So, the light, when it comes, and we have to take advantage of it, because it comes and goes. Light comes and goes. And hearing from God comes and goes. And that's why when I hear something of God, I write it down. Because God says, you just let a lot of things go by you. I mean, God's not going to sit there and give you a great audition for about two hours. He can, but a lot of times he doesn't. And you've got to catch it. He might say three words, and you better get on that three words and then let him show you the rest of it or what it is. And the more that we do this, and the more that we go, and the more that our faith can be used and lifted up. I'm but a pilgrim here on the earth. How I need a map. And your commands are my chart and my guard. I long for your instructions more than I could ever tell you. <laughs> yeah. Psalm 119, verse 18. Open my eyes that I may behold the wondrous things out of your word. We need a map. We need instruction. We need to be led. And so we need to turn on the switch and then let God do the rest. You don't have to beg him. You don't. You just have to wait on him. And it is in God's timing. It is when the Lord wants to bring it. It will always come. If it doesn't come, he'll show you that he's, you are out of his will and this is what he wants you to pray. Now there's another song that's sung by southern people that I kind of like. I didn't used to like it. Thank God for unanswered prayer. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, there's some good, good ways that God did not give to us that would have ruined us, what we prayed for. Oh, yeah. Oh, believe it or not. Things that we wanted, things that we thought was, hey, this is better, God, than, oh, yeah, this. No. No. And God's a good God. Somebody told me this morning, God's good all the time. That's what, that's what they said. God's good all the time. I like that one. Yeah, I mean, you just, you know, you just kind of, you kind of walk in it, live in it, and let it really be uh, your enlightenment. So these are the things that we're seeing today, enlightenment, joy of the Lord. And the more that we continue this and the we walk in these things, 
the more our light shines. And you don't have to go preaching to everybody. And I don't, even though I'm a minister. They just, they hear it in your voice. They hear it in your countenance. They see it in you. Sometimes it's just a smile. Sometimes it's just a hello. Sometimes, how's it going today? You know, God is good. It doesn't have to be a long thing. Many times it was just a sentence somebody said to me. Wow, was that powerful. Was that ever needed today? And the world needs it today. They need us. And then, when the rapture comes, there goes the light. <laughs> oh boy. When we, we are taken out, there goes the light, but God will put more back in. Yeah, there'll be, there'll, you know, during the tribulation, there'll be more back in. But just remember, all these people today, all these leaders and what they're doing, you know, advancing their own agenda, their own pocketbook, their own future, all that they've done, the lying, the cheating, all the stuff, they'll pay for all this. Not only here, but in the life to come. And we win. They don't. Amen. See, we, we win this. All the, even today, with all we see on television, we, we think, no, we don't. We win this. All this will be exposed. All this will come out. We've suffered. It's awful to go through. It's terrible to see what happens to our country. It is. I'm with you. And it's more sometimes than what you can take. And sometimes you just have to shut it off for a while. Yeah. And get your joy back. And get some light going. Because if you don't, it'll eat you up. You don't want to do that. Spend that time with God. But they're not getting away with un And not only that, Jesus is coming back and he's going to take the whole earth. <laughs> Hallelujah! Jesus is going to reign over this whole planet. Oh man, yeah, I, it just thrills me to my soul. Oh my God, I can't stand it sometimes. Jesus! They don't even want to hear his word. You know, they don't like Jesus. I mean, they don't want to hear, even hear about him. And they're trying to take the Bible out. And he's the one that's going to come and take it all over. Oh my God. Awesome. Man, oh man, oh man. Oh brother. And they're all up there. Terry and all of them. They're all up there. All the people that have died, they're all up there. Pastors don't even talk about it. They ought to be talking about that all the time. People are having a time of their life up there. Man, oh man, they're waiting for us to come. Not till our work is done. Okay. Nobody getting out fast. Not till, yeah, no, no. Not till our work is done and our mission, praise God, and we're going to join them, hallelujah, throughout all eternity. Billions and billions of years. And we live, what, 80, 90 here? If you're lucky, 100? Well, what's that? To a few billion and they don't want to read this. And they're reading books about all these, oh my, bunch of trash. All that they put out in these books that I go to the bookstore and they read this stuff and they don't even know this book. They don't, they don't even look what God's got for billions of years for them. Billions! They don't know nothing. Oh, it's It's unbelievable. Boy, you talk about Satan having people blind. Yep. Well, I'm about done. But anyway. <laughs> but you see where we're coming from, don't you? You really do. And that's what I do. I go to these students and I sit down like this and we just open up and we talk like this. And I just say to you today, remember when we, I used to come, we came to the altar, we prayed, we had some good times. We don't have to do that. We can. But we can go home today just as full of the light, what we have learned, get into the Word of God, and just catch on fire. And do what the song says. I saw the light. There's a change in me. And there's going to be a change in you. And more people are going to keep coming here more and more and more. And they're going, Why? Because they need light. And they need to hear the word of God. They need to be around people like you. 
My goodness, I came this morning. It's awesome. See all you people jumping and dancing in that James of that music. My goodness. Who wouldn't want to be in that? Oh, boy. <laughs> and he played a couple songs they usually don't play in church, but good.